Welcome to the Grey and Glue Test! My name is Lynn and this is the Darbin Orver channel and today we're gonna have some fun. Time, I've been really curious as to which glues really perform best. Why do you use one over the other? So I thought today that I'm gonna make a couple of tests. I have an assortment of glues here, some which are traditionally used in joinery and some which are not. I have type on type 2, 3, I have liquid nails, I have epoxy, I have hide glue, I have gorilla glue and I have hot glue. I've set up a couple of different tests plywood and butt joints, and pine and miter joints. They are all set up exactly the same way, and I have followed the glues instructions of the manufacturer. Uh, the glues have cured for 36 hours, so it's going to be very interesting to see how they all compare. So to begin, I'm going to start with this uh, plywood test. Now this is 3 quarter inch AC plywood. I glued and then I put in two screws to clamp these together. I've since removed the screws, so now there's only glue holding this together, and this is the same for all of them. I'm just gonna put this on here, and then we can start our test. First up, tight bond tune. Another five pounds. That is not very strong. That the plywood just broke off here. Next up, we have tight bond three. Okay, let's add a two and a half pound on that. Yeah, that broke a little differently. Uh, next up here, I have two part epoxy. Five pound. Another five pound. Two and a half pounds. The glue joint is intact. It's the plywood, I couldn't handle it. For the next one, I have hot glue. Here, it, it broke at the glue joint. Next up, I have liquid nails or construction adhesive. Let's start with our five pound. <laughs> wow, that did not do that good, did it? The glue broke before the plywood here. Okay, next I have liquid hide glue. 10 pounds? Pretty strong. Okay, so this did not break at the glue point at all. This is the plywood they gave away. Next up I have Gorilla Glue, which is a polyurethane glue. pounds. Okay, well actually the, the glue joint held up really good. It didn't break at the glue joint. It's the plywood that broke off again. I'm not sure exactly what I have learned here other than that plywood really is very weak. This is construction grade plywood and I mean most of the glues they broke off pretty much at the same point more or less. It's really just about how weak this plywood is. Well, that makes me quite curious about my next test, which is dealing with solid wood and miter joints. I think that's going to be more variation uh, in the glue strengths there, it's considering the wood is not going to break off like the plywood did here. So now for this test, uh, I'm using miter joints. I'm using solid wood, this is pine, and for each of these tests, I have glued the joint together and to clamp it down, I put uh, two brad nails, one on each side, in all of them. So it's the same in every single one, so it shouldn't matter for the test. These all have had 36 hour cure time and I followed the instructions from the manufacturer for each type of glue. Starting out, I have tight bond two, starting with the five pounder. That feels very strong. I'm gonna take this off and replace it with a 10 pounder. Let's add more. Very strong. Oh wow. Wow. I'm gonna take this five pounder off and replace it with a 10 pound. Okay. There's like no signs of cracking. Let's try this one. Ooh! Ooh! 
So, <laughs> that was just unbelievably strong. And it was the wood that cracked. <laughs> this wood cracked. The wood just couldn't handle that weight. Wow. That's just incredibly strong. Now I'm doing tight bond two again, but this time using pre-sizing. Now that basically means that I pre-soaked the joint with 50% glue and 50% water mixed together. I waited a couple minutes and then I put on, you know, regular, you know, the glue, um, undiluted. Uh, and this is supposed to make the joint stronger. So let's see if it does. This time I'm just gonna go with the 10 pounders right away because I know it's strong enough. Put this one on too. The sizing didn't work at all. There's no, I mean, this is a good joint too. There are no knots or anything. Huh, I'm quite surprised. I guess this means that glue sizing doesn't work. The theory doesn't match reality. This joint broke at, you know, less than 20 pounds, whereas my uh, regular tight bond, uh, you know, that one broke at 35 pounds. So this one didn't do nearly as well. Now that's really interesting. Now the next one is tight bond three. Okay. Wow, I'm glad I included that because that really shows that age can affect glue. This particular bottle is a couple years old, whereas the Type Bond 2 is a new bottle. So that makes a big difference. Next up, I have Type Bond High Glue. I'm gonna replace this with 10. So that broke at 10. Well, I guess height glue is not so good for this. Huh, didn't do nearly as good as the yellow glue. Next up here, we have hot glue. Hot glue is not something you traditionally use for joinery and it's actually kind of hard to get a good joint because it dries so quickly. Uh, but let's see. I'm, I'm kind of curious about this one. I doubt it's gonna be that strong, but you never know. Pretty strong. Okay, I'm gonna take this one, take this one off, and put a ten pounder on. Say, hot glue is is not too bad. Okay, it's going. Okay, cool. Ten, twenty, thirty-five pounds. It's a pretty good joint. The glue was was covering it really well. It's not too bad. 35. Next up we have Gorilla Glue. Now I would kind of expect this to do pretty good because this is pretty much uh, what this glue is intended for, these types of joints. So I think I'm going to start out with a 10. No cracking or anything. 20 pounds. 25 pounds. Okay, huh, so 30 pounds, a very clean break and the glue is really penetrated. Didn't do quite as good as I would have thought, but I mean, it's still pretty good, but that's very interesting. Now I have liquid nails or construction adhesive and considering how very poorly that did in the previous test, I don't think this is going to do too good, but we'll see. And again, I mean, this is not what you traditionally use for wood joints. Okay, 15 pounds, yeah. It didn't do too good. Not a good contender. Hmm. Next up, I have two-part epoxy. And again, this is not what you traditionally use on, uh, you know, wood joints. So we'll see how this one does here. I'm going to replace it with a 10 pounder. Yep, 
feels very stable. I'm going to put a uh, two and a half pounds on. I'm going to take that off and this one and replace it with a 10 pound. Let's see here. Five pound on. Wow, put on five pounds more. Oh my god! That is just the wood has to break. I mean, wow! Put on two and a half pounds. <laughs> the wood, I can see it flexing. Wow, oh my god, this is so strong. So I'm gonna take the two and a half pounds off and replace it with another five. So since that fell off, I thought I need more concentrated weight, so now I have a 25 pounder on here. So let's move from there. Five pounds, five pounds. I'm gonna take one off and put a 10 pounder on. This, this wood has to break soon. Fifty pounds on there right now. I wonder why the wood is not breaking here. It really, I mean, it's not, it, there's a lot of weight on here. I'm gonna take the top off and put a 10 pound on. Putting my glasses on here now. Because, I mean, sooner or later, this wood is gonna have to break because there's just so much stress on that joint. Breaking. Well, apparently epoxy seems pretty unbreakable, or at least I couldn't break it with the, with the weights that I had. So let's move on to phase number three, the bench press test. So let's see if I can bench press the epoxy joint. Okay, there we go! <laughs> oh, I guess I did it. <laughs> oh, epoxy is incredibly strong. I, it just, it just incredible. I mean, I did not realize how strong this joint is. And apparently, if you need to break it, you have to bench press it. <laughs> Now for the jump test. Uh, this is a plywood again that's been glued together with a tight bond to a yellow glue. So let's see how strong it is this way. I think it's going to be quite strong. Although it's cracking. Okay, let's see. Ha! <laughs> oh, cool. That really wasn't that strong. Ha! Oh wow, that just gave right in. Okay, let's do another one. So since the yellow glue didn't fare too well, I have another one prepared, this time with epoxy. And this is the same 3 quarter inch plywood that I used in the other tests. So let's see how this one, how strong this is. Okay. I'm curious if the plywood is gonna break before the glue joint. Ha, huh. okay, let's see. <laughs> and it looks like a lot of it was the plywood that broke here. At least on this side, it took off more of the wood. Yeah, I, I would say that was definitely stronger than the uh, than the yellow glue. Look at that. That was fun. <laughs> okay, cool. So those were quite fun tests. I actually learned quite a bit. I mean, at the first one, that plywood really is terrible and you better use some screws or something because it's just so weak and the glue it doesn't really matter what you use. You need a better joint with plywood. 
uh, in terms of the glues, when I used uh, the Tight Bond 2 did very well. The Tight Bond 3 I used was actually quite old, and I included that mostly because I wanted to see if it made a difference, and it obviously did. Because on the second test, it did not fare well at all, but it really should have. I also learned that sizing the yellow glue really didn't make much of a difference. It actually performed worse. So that was quite interesting. I was surprised that uh, Gorilla Glue or polyurethane glue didn't do much better. I thought that would perform better. And <laughs> liquid nails, construction adhesive, I mean, that is a very widely used product that people really swear by and that did not perform well at all. So yeah, I, think, I don't think I would really use that much. On the other hand, I mean, hot glue performed as good as yellow glue. Um, really much stronger than people give hot glue credit for. Of course, there's a reason why you don't use hot glue in furniture. Uh, and one of those is that it just doesn't dry, it doesn't cure, it stays soft. Then of course it doesn't give you much time to work with it either, because it just, you know, stiffens up so fast. So it's not very practical to use, other than for crafting projects. Uh, I mean, that's where hide glue is nice, because it takes longer to set up. And hide glue performed, you know, not that great. Uh, it performed... Yeah, not that great at all, actually. And then, of course, we have the winner, which is epoxy. Epoxy is just incredibly strong. And if you want a strong joint, even if you're doing furniture or whatever, use epoxy because epoxy just it's like a rock. Okay, it doesn't, you know, super strong. <laughs> Overall, not all glues are created equal. Miter joints, even when just combined with glue, are surprisingly strong. I mean, even though it's end grain to end grain, and people generally don't think that's going to be that strong, it's very strong. I'm very strong. Of course, these tests are all for fun. I mean, they're not, you know, performed under laboratory conditions. They're performed under real conditions in my shop, the way people would actually use these products. So my results are not gospel. The reason why I do these tests is because I want to know what to do, what works better, uh, etc. It's just for my own curiosity and enjoyment. So I'm probably going to continue doing more of these tests. Uh, because they are interesting and, and they're quite fun to do too. Don't forget to check out my other channel, Darby Notes, where I show more of behind the scenes with shop updates and, and thoughts like that, as well as uh, some other videos. I recently had a wipe on poly hack on that uh, channel, so go and subscribe and check that out. Otherwise, thank you guys so much for watching. Check me out on social media and Instagram uh, and follow me there for more updates and behind the scenes stuff. Thank you, and I'll see you in a couple of days. Bye.